And that is where I realized that the words have the power to heal the soul. My mother said to me, this too shall pass. God has a greater plan for you. I don't know what it is, but he surely has. Well, it is a story of a woman whose perfectly imperfect life made her who and what she is today. It's the story of a woman who in pursuit of her dreams and aspirations made other people realize that if you think that your life is hard and you're giving up on that because you think your life is unfair, think again. Because when you think that way, you are being unfair to your own self. It's the story of a woman who made people realize that sometimes problems are not too big. We are too small because we cannot handle them. It is the story of a woman who with time realized the real happiness doesn't lie in success, money, fame. It lies within. Real happiness lies in gratitude. So I am here and I'm going to share the story of that woman. That is my story. The story of gratitude. believe in the power of words many people speak before they think but I know the value of words the words can make you break you they can heal your soul they can damage you forever so I always try to use the positive words in my life wherever I go they call it adversity I call it opportunity they call it weakness I call it strength they call me disabled I call myself differently able they see my disability They see my disability, I see my ability. There are some incidents that happen in your life. And those incidents are so strong that they change your DNA. Those incidents or accidents are so strong that they break you physically. They deform your body, but they transform your soul. Those incidents break you, deform you, but they mold you into the best version of you. And that is where I realized that the words have the power to heal the soul. My mother said to me, this too shall pass. God has a greater plan for you. I don't know what it is, but he surely has. There are always turning points in your life. There was a rebirth day that I celebrated. After two years and two and a half months, when I was able to sit on a wheelchair, that was the day when I had the rebirth. I was a completely different person. I still remember the day I sat on the wheelchair for the first time, knowing that I'm never going to leave this, knowing that I won't be able to walk for the rest of my life. I saw myself in the mirror and I talked to myself. And I still remember what I said. I cannot wait for a miracle to come and make me walk. I cannot sit in the corner of the room crying, cribbing and begging for mercy because nobody has time. So I have to accept myself the way I am. The sooner the better. So I applied the lip color for the first time. And I erased it. And I cried. And I said, what am I doing? A person on a wheelchair should not do this. What will people say? Clean it up. Put it again. This time I put it for myself because I wanted to feel perfect from within. And 
that day I decided that I'm going to live life for myself. I am not going to be that perfect person for someone. I am just going to take this moment and I will make it perfect for myself. And you know how it all began? That day I decided that I'm going to fight my fears. We all have fears. Fear of unknown, fear of known, fear of losing people, fear of losing health, money. We want to excel in career, we want to become famous, we want to get money. We are scared all the time. So I wrote down one by one all those fears and I decided that I'm going to overcome these fears one at a time. You know what was my biggest fear? Divorce. I couldn't stand this word. I was trying to cling on to this person who didn't want me anymore but I said no. I have to make it work. But the day I decided that this is nothing but my fear. I liberated myself by setting him free and I made myself emotionally so strong that the day I got the news that he's getting married I sent him a text that I'm so happy for you and I wish you all the best and he knows that I pray for him today my biggest fear number two was I won't be able to be a mother again that was quite devastating for me. But then I realized there are so many children in the world, all they want is acceptance. So there is no point of crying, just go and adopt one. And that's what I did. I gave my name in different organizations, different orphanages. I didn't mention that I'm on a wheelchair dying to have a child so I just told them that this is Muniba Mazari and she wants to adopt a boy or girl whatsoever but I want to adopt a kid and I waited patiently two years later I got this call from a very small city in Pakistan I got a call and they said are you Muniba Mazari there is a baby boy and would you like to adopt and when I say yes I could literally feel the labor pain I said yes yes I am going to adopt him I am coming to take him home And when I reached there, the man was sitting and he was looking at me from head to toe. And in the back of my head, I kept thinking that, oh my God, he's going to say she's on the wheelchair. She doesn't deserve it. How is she going to take care of him? And I looked at him and I said, do not judge me because I'm on the wheelchair. But you know what he said? He said, I know you will be the best mother of this child. You both are lucky to have each other. And that day, I was two years old, two days old, and today he's six. You'll be surprised to know another bigger fear that I had in me. It was facing people. I used to hide myself from people. When I was on bed for two years, I used to keep the door closed. I used to pretend that I'm not going to meet anyone, tell them that I'm sleeping. You know why? Because I couldn't stand that sympathy that they had for me. They used to treat me like a patient. When I used to smile, they used to look at me and say that, you're smiling, are you okay? I was tired of this question being asked, are you sick? Well, a lady yesterday at the airport asked me, are you sick? And I said, well, um, besides the spinal cord injury, I'm fine, I guess. Those are really cute questions. They never used to feel cute when I was on the bed. So I used to hide myself from people knowing that, oh my God, I'm not going to see that sympathy in their eyes. It's all right. And today I'm here speaking to all these amazing people because I have overcome the fear. You know, when you end up being on the wheelchair, What's the most painful thing? That's another fear that people on the wheelchair or the people who are differently able have in their hearts but they never share. I'll share that with you. The lack of acceptance. People think that they will not be accepted by other people because we in the world of perfect people are imperfects. 
So I decided that instead of starting an NGO for disability awareness, which I know will not help anyone, I started to appear more in public. I started to paint. I always wanted to. I have done a lot of exhibitions. I'm Pakistan's first wheelchair-bound artist. I have done a lot of modeling campaigns, different campaigns for brands like Tony and Guy. I have done some really funny breaking the barriers kind of modeling. There was this one by the name Clown Town where I became a clown because I know that clowns have hearts too. And then I also decided that if I really want to make the difference, I am not going to let people use me for their polio campaigns where they will make you a victim at an emblem of misery and mercy and will say that, you know what, give polio drops to your children or they'll become like this girl. I decided that I'm going to join the national TV of Pakistan as an anchor person. And I've been doing a lot of shows for the last three years. So when you accept yourself the way you are, the world recognizes you.